This is Julia Whitup with Talk Story TV, and this morning I have with me Ivan Figueroa. That is right. <laughs> and he's going to talk to us about spirituality and love. Good morning, Julia. I'm so happy to join you here so far away. It's incredible. Where are you? Over there in Colorado? I'm in Colorado. And I'm in San Juan, Puerto Rico, in the middle of the Caribbean. How about that? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I love technology. Sometimes. So let's see what we can share with our friends and your immense audience here. So what can we do for them? Well, I'm pretty interested in what you, your most recent book about technology and how the spirituality works in the technical Good. world, too. Good. Uh, let me go back to the first book. My first book title was Spirituality 101 for the Dropout of the School of Life, uh -huh. where I shared a very eclectic vision of the way I see the integration of all religions, Christianity, Buddhism, and emphasize on what spirituality has for us in our personal growth. So I made a textbook, which is called the School of Life. That's what it's called for dropouts of the School of Life, in which I even questions in each chapter to help people have the instruments to develop their own spirituality. That was my first book. So I use terms, traditional Christianity, Buddhism, a lot of things that you've seen around, and I put them together in a new type of pie, but I think I did a good job. I got three awards for the, for that book. Now, I wanted to reach the younger generation. You know, I'm a practitioner. Mm -hmm. I'm a retired pediatric surgeon mm -hmm. first. And then I, do, I did integrative medical care. I studied naturopathy. And finally, I'm doing acupuncture Chinese style, which I'm doing myself. I have a very small boutique type practice, which I like to work with everything I can. I like to have new patients and challenges. That's what I do. So then I decided I need to reach the younger generation because I noticed that my book in the States, especially in the ebook format, did not really catch on too well, although it did very well in Puerto Rico as a bestseller. So I said, I'm going to write, rewrite this book in a cybernetic format. So we made it, I think it's spirituality 1.2 for the disconnected of the school of life, a review for techies. Okay. And, and uh, this book is really interesting because I write by inspiration. I wrote this new version in between my patients in two days. Two days? And after, two days. Less than two days because I did it in a period of eight hours each one. Now, I don't remember lots of what I wrote. But when I read the book, I'm so impressed by the terminology and the glossary is so ample. I say, how did I do this? I'm not an expert in technology, but I've managed to transfer the spiritual language into a technology language. Wow. The, uh, the, it's, you'll see it. It's fun. It's really fun. And, uh, for example, our egos are but I call them firewalls. Ah. And we create our own firewalls, and then we decide through which code I let others come into our realm. Right? Right. Yes. So then that's an ego thing. So, you know, this person can come into my realm. This person can do that. So that's ego. And it's created. And what creates that, uh, that firewall? My experience in life. My genetics. And then I talk about all that in terms of, of it. It's really interesting. And then heaven is that realm of free, unlimited minutes we can always reach and do all our things. And we don't have to pay for anything. So we connect for free and then unlimited time to play our games and whatever you want to do. that's heaven you understand uh -huh. the realm of the free unlimited minutes you like that yeah i like that <laughs> it's fun it's I really you're gonna say the cloud <laughs> now oh no the cloud is a sort of internet the cloud is the internet but well, it's a level and also the realms or the dimensions are called dominions Okay. Remember dominion. So we divided dominion into the parts. It's interesting. It's got a new take on, on 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 the concept. Then I talk about love in cybernetic terms. It's it's really cute. I like what I did. I feel proud of it. I think it's going to do well in the states. This one. Wonderful. It sounds good. Do you have a Do you have it laying around there so you can hold it up and show us the 
cover? And no, Sorry. I don't have it because the book is still in, in it's being I just edited the last version in Spanish. Then it's going to go to English pretty soon. And uh, I have I could share the uh, the 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 the, the what do you call the front part the cover mm -hmm. with you. I can send it to you. So you can put it in the website if you want to later. Okay. I don't have it right now available, but it's a beautiful cover. It's a beautiful, inspiring cover. Wonderful, great. Okay, so. Um, oh, here it is. My wife brought the brought it for me. Look what she oh, did. Oh, wonderful. Let's see if you can see. It. Let's see how I can. Uh huh. Look oh, at. Yeah, that's fabulous cover. That's and a fabulous. Look, cover. And look and look at the design. Uh -huh. There's a female and male figure. Uh -huh. Represent duality. There's a whole bunch of dimensions in universes connected with each other because we're all connected. And there's the binary numbers reflecting the, our language, common language in computer. See? Okay. It's Fascinating. A pretty, it's a good cover. I think the cover is going to win a prize, too. And what's the title in English? It's Spirituality 1.2 for the Disconnected of the School of Life. And where will people be able to buy it? I will have it everywhere in this universe where it can be. <laughs> I will have it on Amazon. I will have it in Smashwords. I will have it whatever you can look around. Okay. Uh, I'm going to plan. I'm going to use Smashwords uh, uh, a lot this time, and I will have it. Initially, I'll throw it on in electronic format. Mm -hmm. I will. I will announce if they keep in contact with my wage paper. I think you have it there. W. I eventually Garoa Otero M and D. I think you have you're gonna have it here. Yes, right. And if you keep that contact and sign up with me, I will let you have a three week segment for discounted uh up up uh, to get it in electronic format. I think it's gonna be ninety nine cents. Later will probably be about four ninety nine. So it'd be a good option for three weeks to get it downloaded. And the only thing you have to say, I promise and cross my heart that we'll give you a review in Amazon, whatever there is. Okay. That's all you have to do. Wonderful. That sounds fun. Mm hmm Okay, so... Um, How about, you wanted to talk about love? Then a yes. woman wants to talk about love? Women, women love to talk, to talk about, about love. love. <laughs> you, you know something? I've learned so much about love by my experience of life in suffering. So really, it's it's such, such an... Uh, strange thing that we learn to love by experiencing suffering, which is really a little bit sad, but I don't remember many times I learned really something by the good ways. I always learned the hard way. My mom used to tell me, ah, you're hard-headed. I'll let you know. You'll see what happens. And then she was always right. I don't know. <laughs> she was always right. I hate it when she said, don't go out tonight. That would mean something's going to happen to me and it never failed. I don't know what happened to your mom. My mom was very psychic. And I was, she said, don't go out. You better pay attention to it. Don't go out. I remember I have many stories for that. Anyway, love is a concept that we've been, my essay, which I, it's in your page, goes to review the concept of love throughout the ages. So I mean, it's more like a university type paper, if you notice. And it goes through, and it, our views of love have been influenced by the way the economy is, the way the society was developed. But basically, the real truth of love is that love is something that comes with us as we're born as souls and spirits. The way I see it, in the Big Bang, everybody got its share of love in equal portions. But the equal portions were not polished because the universe gives us the love in a form of an unpolished diamond. And depending on our level of evolved in previous universes, it will be polished to a certain degree, right? Mm -hmm. But then here we go. We take off in this beautiful universe and go down by levels and dimensions and experiences and universes with a little unpolished diamond. And then, so everybody has the same amount of love, but it's unpolished. You get the idea? Mm -hmm. And then you meet somebody whose diamond is a bit more polished than yours. We say he's a more spiritually evolved person. A teacher or your other part of your soul, people say, you know, my, my twin soul. And then you see that, and say, oh, my God, I would like to have my diamond polished that way. And then suddenly we fall in love. But we fall in love with the beauty of the diamond that we can have. 
when we see in that person, you understand? But it's within me. And then as we live together and share our experiences, our diamond starts getting polished. Right. Then as we look ourselves in the mirror, oh, we feel so great. And then I feel loved and I feel self-sufficient. So when you meet somebody who really makes you feel loved, and he makes you grow and become more of a person, more of a human being, right? Mm -hmm. So then what happens with relationships, you say, okay, I gave my life to that guy. Well, I gave my life to that woman and she took off with another guy. Oh, she abandoned me. Oh, she took my money, whatever, you know, it happens in divorces. And then we keep saying, somebody stole my heart. Somebody broke my heart. Somebody, that's not true. If you understand what I've said, that diamond is with you forever. So if somebody separates and goes away from you, not a single point of your love or your polished diamond goes away. Okay? And that's something we have to learn. Because we are here to polish each other's diamonds and not to steal each other's diamonds. Mm -hmm. And we have to learn when we stop being a reflection in the mirror of the diamond to others. And when it happens, you know what happens? We stay straight away. And then we meet other persons in other levels that help us polish our diamond. That's the way I look at love. And I think it's a very mature, and there's no codependency there. Because okay. human beings tend to make codependent relationships. We depend on who gives more love, who needs my thing. And I call in my book, The Codependence, I call the lame of spirit. The lame of spirit. Because they use others as, with, as crutches to walk in their lives. Okay? Mm -hmm. So a lame spirit is a very codependent person who takes advantage of other weaker codependents to use them as crutches in their life. And that's a codependency relationship. And I say in my other book that even we develop a codependency relationship with God. Because some people use God as a crutch. They don't dare to be co-creators and dare say, I am a son of God. They are afraid to say that we are sons of the spirit. In my book, I give a lot of emphasis on accepting that we are sons of light. We are sons of God. Uh -huh. We are all potential Buddhas. We are all potential Christ. How do you like that, but Julia? I like it. But how do you, if somebody does go away and you loved them, what, what do you say to yourself to keep from falling? Well, in? what you say is, he gave me the best he could, uh -huh. and I did the best I could. But it's over. I cannot help him anymore. He cannot help me anymore. And we have to work our ways. We have to develop ourselves. We're not. A, we're attached by the spirit, but we are not touched by the physical aspects of ourselves. And so you, you can't become attached to a person physically. You can still have the memory of the experience in your subconscious, which is good. I never think anything that we have as an experience is bad. We cannot look back for bad marriages bad relationships, bad works, bad bosses, no. Those are just experiences. We don't classify. They're just learning experience at the school of life. And my book is a learning experience. What, do you, what if they take your children away? Oh, well, since children, that's a good question, Julia. I like the way you asked your question. If, if you realize that children are spirits and sons of light, you have to see that the experience is part of their growing up. Uh, it's their issue to learn from and my issue to understand. Nothing occurs without a cause and everything creates an effect. Sometimes we think it's not fair. We, you look at something. Now, that, that earthquake in, in, in Nepal, such a beautiful country. You say, why? It's not fair. We, do you say that? You say, it's not fair. Why do you say it's not fair? Who are you to judge how the universe established priorities? It's really an ego trip when I say it's not fair to see that or to happen. What I don't say, what I, I will say, I have compassion for that event. I have co anything I can do for those people, I will, but I will not rebel for the experience. I, I will not look upon those beings with pity. I will use compassion and empathy with those beings. I really would not like that to happen to my country or to my family, right? Right. But I don't rebel against the meaning of that experience for all those beings. After all, we are co-creators of our heavens or our hells. So let's not blame anybody for our experiences. That's all in my book. Wow, that sounds and, like... And, and there'll be more coming. 
I'm going to write seven books with this. I think it's going to be five more books. Wow. And the way I'm going, they're going to start coming out every six months. Okay. And t tell us, you have a website? Yes. My website is, like my name, www.ivanfigueroaoteromd.com. Ivan Figueroa Otero MD dot com. There you can find a lot of information about me, my books. There's a nice blog where nobody goes to see. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and but you can also sign up, and I'll I'll let you know when my special is coming. I think it's a great thing to get a book for ninety nine cents. Yeah. Uh, and, and and just try. It'll be. I think I'm going to do it for about three months. Okay. Well, I'll put a link in with your show on YouTube so if anyone wants to get a hold of you so I'm really happy Julia I hope we, uh, your 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 followers enjoyed this I like like you see I like to talk a lot <laughs> you know I remember I am uh, I, I like to talk share with people with my patients I learned to adapt and use the knowledge that we have learned through many ages and make it practical for people there's got to be a way how to forgive for example Right, exactly. but how can I forgive? Well, you have to forgive because really nobody can hurt you. You, you only get hurt in the concept or your prejudice that you had before. That's what hurts. Really gets hurt. And actually, hurting is just a way of making you change. It's it it, it's, it could be an experience of churn changing, but also the hurt can be an attachment to a previous situation. Uh, men uh, in the Chinese medicine, uh, anger occurs because the frustration of not obtaining what I think I should. Mm -hmm. So these are usually these, these are people who are workaholics, perfectionists, and I sit in my office with a bunch of stress, pain, arrhythmias, constipation, women with problems with menstruation, and they're very perfectionist. They're type A. Uh -huh. So. They're frustrated because they put up their own goals. Everybody wants to be number one, the gold medal, but nobody wants to be the silver or the, or the, or the copper, you know? Right. And, and uh, it, it, we're trained to be number one. And I had a mother that trained me to be number one plus. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and that was hard to keep up with that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's, that's why I became a pediatric surgeon. I think some of us were just meant to be supporters. I think everybody has a role and no role. I like to say that the universe is like a big, beautiful symphony in which all the musicians, all the instruments, and all the portions that we have to play are important. We cannot say that because I played the piano for 10 minutes, I'm more important than the guy who hit the drums a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. And that's a ego concept. For the universe, there's no symphony so I have to feel proud that I can bang the little drums or click the little sticks at one time, whatever it is, and feel proud that without me, the symphony doesn't occur. How do you like that? I like that. That's the way I feel like life is. I really believe that. And I tell my patients that don't start comparing your roles, that your role is better, that you're a physician, you're a surgeon, whatever it is, everybody's important. As a spirit, we're all here to share the place and the merit. if this person wants to ask a question. Of course. I'd love to. He's, well, the, I asked him if he had a question. Do you have a question, Thrash, Thrashid? Thrashid. Uh, We're available. We're available if you have, not yet, he says. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, we have yeah, I used to be very shy, too. I hate it, too. But look at me now. I used to, I used to, I used to hate to get up in the schoolroom and write the, you know, the, the things in the board oh, and the right. and the math and all that. I would hate it because I was a slow writer. I had a very ugly handwriting, so I was so ashamed. So here I am. And later, so I, I adapted, I learned, I became a pediatric surgeon, became a physician, became a writer. I am 70 years old, my first book. Not never late. That's great. So you're going to write a bunch more, too. Of course I am. I have to. I have to. I feel that I have an obligation. Uh, I, that I have to share whatever I've learned in my life and whatever the Spirit wants me to share, I have to do it. 
I write by inspiration, I think it's very important. I think I flow, uh -huh. and and whatever I write is is something which is beautiful to share. Somebody else may use it or not. It's one way, but it's not my way. It's not my way, the highway. It's the way I like to use my testimony. But people can have different experiences. There's no special guru or no special way of doing things. Each one of us will find our own path. Yeah. Well, we're kind of running out of time here. So I'd like to direct the listeners to go to uh, the... Uh, Dream, uh, let's see, Postcards from Dreamtime. That's where your article about love is. Do you want to say a little bit about your article? Yeah, basically, what I do, my, I mentioned at, at, the, at the beginning, was that my concept of love, I, I describe all sorts of love we have in the world, sexual love, physical, whatever it is, uh, mother, maternal love, they're all beautiful, but they're all like parts of a big, it's like one color of the whole rainbow. So each one is important. None is better than the other one. But the whole aspect is, like I said, love comes with you in, an, in a very unpolished manner. And we come into the universe to learn to polish our love. So think about it as a beautiful diamond that I have. Some people have it a little bit more polished than others. But each one of us is going to finally finish our job. And then we're going to go back to our spirit with a beautiful, completely shine, perfect diamond. And that's what we have to look for. And th learn to find love within yourself and not to look at in somebody else. When you see it in the mirror of somebody else, it's only to find it within yourself. It's very important, that concept. Okay. We have to have our self-esteem, which is one of the worst <coughs> things young kids have. Having a low self-esteem is the worst thing that can happen to a human being. That creates all sorts of problems in life. Well, I'm going to go to your website at Ivan Figueroa Otero MD dot com. Okay, and sign up for your stuff. And I oh great. And I encourage anyone who's watching this show to do the same. And I'll put the link on it when I upload it to YouTube. For for those millions of people who just came in a couple of minutes ago, what she's talking about is that I'm going to uh, do a pre-sale of a book. It's called Spirituality 1.2 for the Disconnected of the School of Love, of Life uh, Review for Techies, which is basically a spirituality book written in a cybernetic language. It's okay. really interesting. It's all computer language and science and connections and firewalls and dominions and motherboards. Well, the motherboard. The mother what can we do without the motherboard? <laughs> that holds everything together. There's everything there. Everything is in the language of love. <laughs> and love is a state of permanent interconnection. Okay. And uh, fear and suffering is a disconnection from that state. See? Okay. You have a bad Wi-Fi connection. Oh, I should have said that sounds sexy. <laughs> yes. Anyway, but that's what I'm going to do. So my book is going to come out maybe soon. I'll in the ebook format, probably in 99 cents, uh, and you can download it from that uh, the point where I'm going to give you where you're going to get it, and then it's going to come out three months later. It's much it's more expensive. Okay. But I want all you guys to read it and give me a good review. I mean, not a good review. Give me an honest review. That's okay. what I mean. We'll but it's going to be good because how can it be? It's such a good book. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Nothing like self-confidence. Thank you, Julia. Okay. Keep, keep in contact with me, okay? I will. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.